Hello and welcome to the Design of Craft Beer hosted by Mother Sponge. My name is Sean Kelly, founder and creative director of Mother Sponge Beverage Branding Agency in San Diego, California. For the inaugural year of San Diego Design Week, we're proud to present this series of discussions with designers working in the craft beer industry. The San Diego Tijuana region is home to over 150 craft breweries, including many award-winning and internationally recognized innovators. In this series, you'll meet four local graphic designers who have played a large part in bringing the spirit and vision of some of our region's most notable beer brands to life. Thank you for joining us and cheers to the capital of craft. In this segment of the design of craft beer, I'll be chatting with the prolific and sometimes heavily bearded Dylan Jones. While at design agency Myers Ball, Dylan led the rebrand of Ballast Point, a milestone project that caught the attention of many in both the design and the craft industries. Dylan eventually went in-house at Ballast, shepherding the creative team through an astounding period of growth that culminated in the infamous sale to Constellation Brands for one billion with a B dollars. Along the way, he's had a hand in several other craft beer projects, including some spin-off brands for Tommy Arthur of Lost Abbey Port. So let's dive in. Mr. Jones. How's it going? Good, man. How are you doing? Good. I was kind of curious about one of your more recent projects, the Tiny Bubbles. When did that kick off and what's that been like so far? Yeah, they only launched it. Um, and it's sort of been, you know, a modified soft launch because of the, the, um, the lockdown. But uh, yeah, let's say it probably came out two months, maybe three months ago. So right at the beginning of all of this. Mm-hmm. Not, not exactly the greatest time to launch any new product, but, <laughs> you know, they stuck to their guns and, it's been tasting room, mostly tasting room only um, releases. I think they do have, you know, grocery store distribution and stuff right now. But um, yeah. I had worked with Tommy Arthur a little bit on the Hop Freshener series, which right. was the first, uh, it was the very first series that uh, Hop Concept did. So he has, you know, Port Brewing is the same facility as uh, Lost Abbey. Then they launched Hop Concept. And the reason why they did Hop Concept, when they came to us, they said, you know, we want to make these big, juicy IPAs that everybody's, you know, clamoring for. And um, they didn't feel that it really fit into Lost Abbey, Mm -hmm. you know, thematically. And uh, they thought that it might cannibalize some of the port brewing stuff. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, we're going to have a standalone brand that would be Mm-hmm. just for these types of IPAs. You know, what did you big, think about that from a brand positioning standpoint? I understood it. It, 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 and it poses challenges in itself by doing that, but he was right. You know, it, it didn't necessarily plug into either one of those brands. So yeah. he wanted to um, have it to be a standalone. So actually when I was at uh, Experiences for Mankind, which that was the agency I was at, um, mm-hmm after Myers, before I went in-house to Ballast Point, uh, Tommy had reached out to me about this project, wanted to talk to me about it. And, and similar thing, we kind of took it on as a labor of love. You know, he had a budget, but not a, not a huge budget, but mm-hmm. Tommy makes some of the best beers in, <laughs> in the world. <laughs> so we, were, we said, yeah, let's, let's do it. It'll be fun. And, and a similar thing, you know, the agency was looking to, you know, check a box of a, portfolio you know that maybe they didn't already have and yeah so we worked on that brand it wasn't a huge ongoing project but we did like the initial look and feel and launch of it mm-hmm. and then um so i had worked with tommy before um, and then he had recently uh reached out to me about the tiny bubbles project and i mean he wants to say true to beer because that's what he is that's who he that's how yeah. he built his entire career so he knew it was going to be a beer but the marketing, the brand, the everything about it can be different than his other stuff. That's in a slim can. Yes, it's in a twelve yeah, ounce. So I mean, just that alone. Yeah. You talk to a lot of people in the beer industry; <laughs> they might like look at you funny, <laughs> you know. And I, I don't really get that. Like, I think it's cool to see people coming up with new formats and trying different things. 
Um, but yeah, it's, it's uh, definitely like a good way to stand out, I guess. Yeah. And there is that weird perception though that people have with something as small as, oh, it's in a slim can? Wait, what, wait a minute, this can't be beer. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so Tommy had made the decision. He's like, yeah, we're, we're gonna put it in a slim can. We're, they're not actively going after like seltzer drinkers necessarily, but it is that crossover flavor profile, you know? Yeah. It's, it's, it's got a little bit of that Berliner Weiss tartness. Yeah. Which is awesome. And it's yeah. low ABV. Totally. I think it, I think it comes in around four, two. I mean, to me, besides a session IPA or really good lager or something, that's like the perfect beer to have at a barbecue. Or a yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. So it, when, when I started working on this with him, we sat down at the confessional up at, uh, up in Cardiff and just had a couple of beers, talked about the idea, talked about the reason why he's going to do yet a fourth brand instead of plugging this into one of his. I have a confession to make. (laughs) But it's a similar, (laughs) similar challenge, right? Like that's, that's definitely not something that fits into those other. Yeah. um, The first thing we talked about was the fact that it was called tiny bubbles. You know, it's named after a Don Ho song, like from the sixties. So we, we, so, oh, we, all these images were kind of coming to our minds. It's like, this is 1960s kitsch. Mm-hmm. Um, the idea of the tiny bubbles is, is super fun. I mean, just you smile when you hear that name. So, we, you know, one of the one of the design options was very like Hawaiian tiki vibe. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's sitting there telling me this and I'm like drooling as a designer. I'm like, yes, <laughs> let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, in my in my initial like round one pass i i was pulling all sorts of swipe and i started a common thing in you know 1960s advertising was like this idea of a mascot and so i was like oh that's interesting what if we made the bubble into a mascot you know i started looking and look at the um scrubbing bubbles guy and <laughs> you know yeah. those types of things which i think as designers you know we're suckers for that kind of stuff anyways but yeah so one option that i started exploring was that and um that one just started to to get a lot of momentum mm-hmm. for for me internally as i was working on it yeah and i was going oh look this is how it works on the can this is how it works here and this and here's how you can you know add something to these characters and mm-hmm. it just naturally started to kind of come to life a little bit yeah and so uh i don't typically do this when i present round ones but i blew that option out a little bit more than I did the other ones. Even if I wouldn't have said anything, he would have known that I was yeah. leaning towards that because I, so. you know, I mean, it may have had a couple of extra pages on. <laughs> you know, I, I, I do feel though, when that's happening naturally, you kind of just, you, you can't yeah. like artificially stop that. I mean, that's- Yeah, no, I, I, I always want someone to, to um, come at it with a fresh and honest, you know, opinion of it when I present it but at the same time they always ask you well what's your favorite yeah and in this case it was like it's clear that this one's my favorite and here's why mm-hmm. so I uh I mean it's not the only I would say it's the, it's the only job I've ever worked on that that's happened but mm-hmm. this one definitely happened and I, I you know honestly was kind of hoping that that, it, that he would see what I saw in it right yeah. and he shared it around you know internally and everybody got it. They go, oh, this is really fun. It, it should be. This. And if it stands up, then you know you, you're onto something. Because, yeah, a lot of times when you're looking at it in a vacuum, you don't have the, the rationale or the backstory. Or they're trying to translate your story. Yeah. Sometimes it doesn't. I, I, would have, I would bet even sometimes they just share it blindly and go, hey, what do you think of this? Mm-hmm. Gut reaction. Yeah. You know nothing. What do you think? I mean, it goes back to that trust thing you were talking about. And, you know, I think part of it was that I, I did work on one brand with Tommy before. Mm-hmm. And so we had a little bit of a relationship. At the end of the day, I mean, everybody liked it, but there's some trust involved there for, for me to throw him a wild card mm-hmm. yeah. and him accept it because you don't always get that. Definitely. Because of that trust, uh, it allowed me personally to just get out of my comfort zone a little bit. You know, I, that, I wouldn't look at that tiny bubble stuff immediately and go, Oh, that's, that looks like something I would do. Mm -hmm. And so I was happy with that. 
<clears throat> I was happy to the, uh, about the fact that it got me out of my comfort zone a little bit. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, it for sure made me, I enjoyed working on it a lot because of that. Yeah. Because it was, it was not something I even expected for myself to, to, to do. Yeah, definitely. We're working on re refining packaging and what's the story to the consumer and things like that. Um, so it's, there's, there's still some work to be done. What I did see the other day was this really cool um, shots with rows of isolated cans that John did um, with kind of a colored background. Oh yeah. Those yeah, really fun. Cool. yeah. We felt like the, um, we were making probably a bad dad joke, but like the idea of pop art, because it's a bubble and the, the visual, you know, photography and just the overall look for yeah. what could happen at, you know, as the brand grows is, you know, really kind of crisp, clean, hard shadows and bright colors and, and just approach it as a fun, I, you should look at the photograph and get, get a smile. Yeah. So definitely. we haven't done much of that yet. We've done a little bit, mm -hmm. um, but we're hoping that, you know, once, once the brands take off, we can do a lot more of that. A big thank you to Dylan Jones for taking time to chat and share his work. Keep up with Dylan on Instagram at Dylan Jones Design Co. And thank you all for watching the design of craft beer with Mother Sponge. Be sure to check out the other three interviews on the San Diego Design Week website.